My understanding of the statement of Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, that in the last days it is going to be very difficult to be a Christian, is that progressively it will become more and more difficult for you and I to stand up for the truth Christ expects to see in our lives and in our conduct. Recently, I explained that the manner and nature of our Christian walk speaks louder and clearer than our Christian talk. You will agree with me that there are many so-called believers who know how to say all the right things, but habitually they do things contrary to what the Bible expects of anyone who professes to believe. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 6, we are told, if we claim that we experience a shared life with Him, that is with Christ, and continue to stumble around in the dark, we are obviously lying through our teeth. We are not living what we claim. For instance, a missionary once told the story about him speaking to a group of non-Christian women and was surprised to see one of them get up and walk away. Soon she returned and listened more intently than before. Why did you leave in the middle of my message? asked the missionary. I was so interested in the wonderful things you were saying that I went to ask members of your household if you truly live according to what you are saying in your teaching. They told me you do. So I came back to hear more about Jesus, said the woman. How touching and instructive. Brothers and sisters, I believe one crucial reason we are finding it difficult to be the true Christian man and woman we ought to be is lack of proper understanding of scriptures. I should stress the word proper. Sadly, we seem unable to appreciate and grasp what real Christian standards and values are these days. I put this problem down to the quality of the spiritual instructions we allow ourselves to be exposed to. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, Paul advised Timothy, Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast lent them. He goes on to say in verse 16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And what are all these measures for? Verse 17 gives the answer, That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Another translation renders it this way, saying, through the word, we are put together and shaped up for the task God has for us. The truth is, we cannot amount to much in God unless and until we allow his word to put us together and then shape, mold, and conform us to his will. This is the only way a real and a true Christian can be made. However, to talk of putting together is to presuppose there was first a breaking apart. This, unfortunately, is where we have a problem. You see, man does not see himself as needing any help. Man has believed his own lie that he knows what is best for himself, when in truth he does not know. We kid ourselves that we are strong, when in actual fact we are weak. We tell ourselves we are wise, when we are anything else but this. Truth be told, no one will readily admit to being weak. No one likes their vulnerability to show or be exposed. The world does not view being vulnerable with much understanding or consideration. The dictionary defines vulnerability as to be capable of being wounded, liable to injury or hurt to feelings, open to successful attack, capable of being persuaded or tempted. Although no one likes to be vulnerable or to feel vulnerable, this is the description of the nature of a true Christian, a powerless person except in Christ. This is what a Christian is. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, Paul says, I take limitations in stride and with good cheer. These limitations that cut me down to size, Things like abuse, accidents, opposition, bad breaks, I just let Christ take over. And so the weaker I get, Paul says, the stronger I become. 
is this man for real? I am convinced that he is. I am speaking to you today about the power of vulnerability. Is this a contradiction of terms? How can you be strong when you are weak? Well, such are the truths conveyed in the Christian message, which look like contradictions, but are in fact no contradictions at all. Have I confused you? Don't be. You see, the lesson we need to learn all over again in order to be and remain true and standing Christians is that our victory is in our surrender and our living is in our dying. Did you get that? Let me repeat myself. Our Christian victory is in our surrender and our living is in our dying. Although the world would have us pretend to be strong and almost invincible, God calls us rather to meekness and low lowliness of heart. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, God said to Paul, My grace is enough. It's all you need. My strength comes into its own in your weakness. These are the words of assurance that you and I still need to hear and take to heart. Whose report would you believe? That of God or that of man? Your teachers have called you dull. Your peers and pals have wondered how you got this far anyway. After several years on the job, your colleagues are still surprised you got the job in the first place, despite your thick accent and your looks. Listen, the next time they summon the courage to ask you, how do you do what you do? Tell them about the power of vulnerability. Let your life keep on demonstrating how the power of the omnipotent one is mightily at work in you. You cannot lose nor fail because the one who lives in you cannot be defeated, cannot lose, and cannot fail. If what I am sharing with you about the power of vulnerability sounds new and strange to you, why not just begin by trusting God today with a heart of genuine surrender? Acknowledge your weakness and invite his spirit into your life that he may refresh, revive, strengthen, and deliver you. This is what he did for David when David faced a Goliath situation such as you may be facing today. You see, to everyone else, Goliath was strong, David was weak. But to David, a type of the surrendered Christian, knowing his place and privilege in God, Goliath was the defeated one and he was the one with the assurance of victory. To round up the point we are making here, Apostle Peter has a word of advice for us. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, he says, Be content with who you are. Don't put on airs. Don't pretend to be strong. Don't pretend to be macho. Recognize that you are weak. God's strong hand is on you. He will promote you at the right time. Success comes from the Lord, and so does promotion and progress. God wants to perfect his strength in every area of your weakness, but will you surrender to him? I pray you do, so we can celebrate the manifestation of God's goodness in your life. Amen. My name is B. Yajala, and I thank you for watching and for partnering with me in this task of making ready a people prepared for the Lord. Thank you, and God bless you.